Coogan Cassis Rifle TV in association with MTK Global. Uh, we're in Glasgow, uh, head of the weigh-in for uh, Taylor and Davies. Yep. Um, how is Josh this morning? Yeah, looking good. Um, just took a little bit of weight off last night and doesn't struggle at the weight or anything like that. So it's good just to like a little flush out and this morning he's bang on the weight. Looking forward to getting the hard part out of the way, which is obviously the weight in for these guys. They struggle and boil themselves down to a certain weight and then once they've weighed in, it's like a, the first hurdle and then obviously looking forward to tomorrow night. Obviously this interview will probably go out after the weigh-in, so uh, we, we're not to tell whether anything would have happened at the weigh-in, but you're not expecting anything to let's happen or are you, Shane? Nah, let's hope not. You know, let's hope they can be uh, professionals about it. It's no point trying to sell any more tickets now or trying to do anything else now, do you know what I mean? Like, I think there's a lot of needle between them and that, that doesn't, you know, it, it, like, that's, just, that's just them. I just don't think their personalities clash that well. Um, so I just hope they kind of keep it, keep it together and just get the weight in because no point ruining something now, you know, because they've only got like 24 hours to wait so they go and batter each other. Absolutely. Um, Tomorrow night in Monaco, uh, we're going to see the the draw for the World Boxing Super Series, and um, obviously the new. I to call it Super Six, but yeah, it's Super strange. Eight. Yes, yeah, Super Series. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, the news today, obviously, that the the winner of um, Chris Eubank and Arthur Abraham next week uh, will go into the tournament. So seeded number three, I think. Yeah. yeah so. so we're going to have uh, four Brits in the super middleweight division. It's it's exciting for us. Yeah, no, definitely, and um, George is seeded number one, and then you've got Cam Smith in number two, and then the winner of uh, the winner of Eubank versus uh, Abraham's in number three, and you know, Jamie Cox is unseeded, so you're going to see who's going to pick Jamie Cox, but I think there'll be there'll be probably a domestic clash with each, you know, in each round, as it were. So not from you know just just in, in general. So there'll be. Either Cox fighting um, Eubank or Cox fighting us or, or fighting um, Kampman. There's a lot of questions about obviously where these fights will take place, when they will take place, exactly how it's going to work, uh, over what period of time. But I'm sure a lot of that information will be put out uh, after to, the yeah. draw, yeah. I think they want to do it within 10 months or something. So they won't, but you know, these things are like always injury occurs and. I mean, that Super 6 tournament took, took a little bit too long. I think that's what they're trying to stray, stay away from, is um, it dragging on, you know what I mean? And just dwindling and out and losing interest. So they're going to make it real short, sharp and compact. So let's hope everyone stays injury free and we can just ro keep rolling fight after fight. It's a shame James the Gatway isn't in it. No, I think he's out until the, mm, the end yeah. of the year or possibly next year with that shoulder injury. He said it, it went a little, lot um, it's a lot more intrusive than they thought so maybe you know, he can sit there patiently have a little easy fight in between and get the winner so that, that's probably what he's thinking definitely a Brit, a Brit will win it <laughs> um, and also I mean the cruiserweight division is uh, got a lot of, uh, yeah, of strong good. fighters in it uh, some of the best uh, well, most of the best are in it, to be honest. I think yeah. there's three world champions from the cruiserweights. Usek, they've got that. Um, Gasseyev Bre as well. They've and Breedis, Bre yeah. Bre yeah so. And Mike Perez has been added to it as well. Oh, so. God, yeah, that's, that's going to be a good one. I don't know how well he's going to do it at the cruiserweight division because he looks in fantastic shape. Blew some guy out in uh, Belfast, but we'll see. I think he's he's got a lot, lot to give there, Perez. I don't think he's, he's been an underachiever and he's got fantastic talent. But um, we'll see how he, he really he should have always been a cruiserweight, you know, with frame and stature. So could see um, could see him upset some people. Um, the other news, obviously, we found out yesterday is uh, David Hay has announced uh, his new trainer. Ismail uh, Salas. Yep, Ismail Salas, indeed. And we know um, David's uh, had a sort of a uh, little bit of a relationship with uh, Ismail Salas in the yeah, past. Yeah, so for a long time. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that, Shane? I think. Um, it's a good move for David because it's because he's worked with him in the past. He worked with him a little bit um, on the side when he was when he was with Booth, and then since um, his shoulder injury, since being out for a long time, he worked with him as well before he started training with me, and to kind of put us both on a, on a trial period, and decided to go with me, and now he's 
you know, we've, we've parted ways and now he's going with Salah. So I think it's a good move for him. I think Salah is a fantastic coach. Um, don't know how a, a five foot two man is going to be holding pads for him. I think he's going to get in. Actually, I, think, I know he's going to get in Big Stevie, who used to work for me, um, to, 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 to take the pads for him. And um, I think good luck to him. You know what I mean, I think at this stage of David's career, he's not going to get technically much better. Um, you know, I think uh, he just needs to get through training camps injury free and be fit and ready and sharp for, for fight night. After the fight with Tony Bellew uh, back in March, um, how long was it before sort of you pro probably realised that that sort of relationship with David wasn't going to work out in a, in a boxing sense? Um, from, for, from my point of view, it was straight after the fight, to be honest. Um, it didn't, it didn't go, the camp didn't go the way, the way it should have, should have gone and um, I feel I, did, I didn't bring the best David Hay to, to the table and if I wasn't able to stamp my authority and, and get the best out of him then kind of pissing into the wind but um, you know he, he went into the, to the surgery and like I'm, I'm good, good friends with David, I mean him like good friends, but from a working relationship, I just don't think it. I, I realised pretty quickly that that, that it wasn't going to work. So, um, you know, I think Salas will will be. It's almost like going to school again, isn't it? It's like you go to a new school, you get really excited, and you're buzzing for it, you know for a while. So I think if that if that is the option that that, that he's taken, you know, I think it's a, it's a good option. Then that, it, that, that's what that's what I want to see from him. I want to see him back. And <laughs> sorry, I just trying to try not to get distracted here. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's what's good. It's what's going to be good for him. You know what I mean, um, going back in the gym, excited to get back in there training. He's got Paul Gilanaris is basing himself over in London as well, so he's got another um, phenomenal fight to, to be in the gym and, and see and bounce off. So. Um, I yeah, just hope he can get through through training camps and and um, get back to where he should be because he is a phenomenal fighter and um, he deserves to be to be back there. Yeah. It's good to see that you you know you've maintained your friendship with yeah. David and it wasn't kind of one of those sort of awkward, Sour, awkward yeah moments. Yeah, no, it doesn't need to be. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like does it? It's not. It's not an insult. It's not an insult to either of us either of us if it's not working out, do you know what I mean? So for me, like and him, we 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 knew like it wasn't it wasn't working, so we put a lot of effort and time into it and I just think, you know, we're just different different people in terms of from a working standpoint. Um, and you know, I hope he hope he finds it again. Hmm. But you've got uh, obviously enough on your plate as it is anyway, uh, yeah. with so, Taylor yeah. and Groves and yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. I mean, George, you know, you can, George, I took George on a month afterwards and did three attempts at winning a world title and lost all three. And then, he, you know, around the same sort of time, me and David parted away, so he won that world title. So, um, some things don't work out and some things do. And it's great to see George, you know, in the position now, going out to, to the Super Series and in a strong position, seeded number one. Um, you know, like with the world title around his waist, which is the thing that he set out to do since he was seven or eight years of age, he's achieved it. So, um, yeah, there's ups and downs in boxing. You've got to roll with it, isn't it? Absolutely. Okay. Well, listen, I know we're heading off to the weigh-in soon, so uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate and um, yeah. Thanks, mate. No problem. Couldn't catch us here with Shane McGuigan for IFL TV. Thank you very Cheers. much.